Hello, I'm Tim Smith with the Adams County Historical Society. And today, we're gonna to talk about one of Gettysburg's hometown heroes, Eddie Plank. Eddie Plank was a pitcher in the major leagues for some 17 seasons. He was one of the most dominant left-handed pitchers of all time. And here on the campus of Gettysburg College, there's a Pennsylvania Historic Museum Commission marker that was placed here in the year 2000 to honor him. He pitched for Gettysburg College. He lived near Gettysburg all his life. He died in that house across the street. So join us on a journey through some of Eddie Plank's uh, Gettysburg history. The Plank family were some of the early German settlers in the area around Gettysburg. Uh, Eddie Plank's grandfather, his farm was used as a hospital after the battle. And his uncle was running the farm at the time and his father actually was there during the battle. As a matter of fact, General John Bell Hood was operated at the Plank farm for wounds received in the fighting at Little Round Top. Eddie Plank's father, David Plank, eventually married a girl from Hunterstown and they moved to this farm in Straban Township along Keller Road, um, five miles or so north of the town of Gettysburg. And this is where Eddie Plank was born on August 31st, 1875. He and his brothers learned to play baseball here uh, while they were involved in their uh, farming duties. As a matter of fact, an article in the Gettysburg Times at the time of his death uh, mentions that a haystack was the first backstop against which Eddie Plank, famous South Pole baseball pitcher who died yesterday at his home here, pitched. When a youth, Plank, who lived on a farm in Straban Township, joined with other township boys to organize the Good Intent baseball team. He was the pitcher and spent many weary hours pitching against an old haystack, developing speed and curves. And there's also another uh, locally held story that uh, he threw his baseball against the barn and at one point his father got really angry with him for putting holes in the barn with his baseball. Um, now, I believe that the house has been rebuilt. This is not the 1875 house, but undoubtedly the barn uh, stands on the same foundation. This is the Good Intent Schoolhouse. And we're at the intersection of Good Intent Road and Keller Road, and which is just about a half a mile from the Plank Farm. And this is where Eddie Plank and his brothers went to school. Now, um, this area actually was involved in the Gettysburg Campaign. Not far from here, on June 26th, 1863, there was a skirmish between the 26th Pennsylvania Emergency Regiment and part of the 17th Virginia Cavalry. And after the fight was over and the 26th retreated from the area, uh, some of the Louisiana Tigers arrived of Harry Hayes' brigade. And there's a great civilian account where the Louisiana Tigers are camped around this farm on the night of June 26th. Um, but this is the site where uh, the boys of the Good Intent Schoolhouse formed a baseball club. It's interesting, in later years, uh, people like to downplay Eddie Plank's experience as a young baseball player and make it appear as, sound as if he just suddenly uh, came to his baseball prowess while he was a you know, young major leaguer. Uh, for instance, in the 1911 article, it stated, um, now there is a touch of unique in Plank's life. Until he was 20 years of age, he never saw a baseball score. Until he was 16, he never saw a baseball and a bat. And until he was 17, he never pitched in a game. Now, I don't know about that, but by the time he was 20, he and the other young men in this 
area had formed their own baseball team and played against other area baseball teams. And you can find articles about their team in the Gettysburg newspapers, the Adams Sentinel and the Gettysburg Compiler at the time. And this is from the Gettysburg Compiler, August 27th, 1895. So he'd be almost 20 years old. A game of ball was played last Friday on the good intent grounds between the home team and the Arntsville team, which resulted in a score of 15 to seven. Plank, good intense pitcher, had the Arntsville boys completely at his mercy, striking out 13 of their heaviest batters. So when you read these articles in the paper, even though Plank is playing for the Good Intent team or for the Gettysburg Town team or occasionally, you know, with the McSherry's Town team, he is already showing that he is a very good baseball player. Eventually, Eddie Plank played for the Gettysburg Town team and his pitching attracted the notice of Gettysburg College coaches. So during the year 1900, and early in the season, 1901, Eddie Plank pitched for the Gettysburg College baseball team. And this is actually the site of Nixon Field, which was the original ball field that they played on. The pitcher's mound, which Eddie pitched from, would be in the middle of the Musselman Library. And we'll put this picture in so you can see. Now, um, even before he pitched for the college team, he was pitching at Nixon Field as part of the Gettysburg Town team. According to an article in the compiler on August 22nd, 1899, in a game of baseball with Elizabethtown on Nixon Field last Wednesday afternoon, Gettysburg was victorious, winning by a score of 12 to five. Plank pitched a very credible game and with some few exceptions, received good support. Now, um, after he pitched for the Gettysburg College team in 1900, he again pitched for the Gettysburg Town team that summer in 1900. But by this time, he had honed his skills with real coaches that had baseball experience, and he got better. As a matter of fact, there's a game reported in the Gettysburg Compiler of uh, July 17th, 1900, uh, that talks about Gettysburg beating Penn Park five to two. The home team played a fine game, considering the fact that they have had but little practice and had never played together previously in a game. Plank was in the box for the home team and put up an excellent game, allowing but few hits and striking out 19 men, 19 strikeouts. That is an impressive total. Now, Plank, he got the attention of scouts. And there's a few articles in the paper that mention that. Um, uh, according to a May 1900 article, Eddie Plank of the College Baseball Nine has been offered a position as a pitcher on the Richmond team in the Virginia League. This would be the Richmond Colts. In 1901, it was mentioned that he was offered a contract by uh, the Chester team, Chester, Pennsylvania, minor league club. So it was getting serious. And, um, you know, there are a lot of questions about exactly how it happened. But early in 1901, a coach for the Gettysburg College team, uh, who went on to be um, a coach in the American League, actually saw Connie Mack early in the year and mentioned Eddie Plank to him. You, know, you see, the American League had been established in 1901 and they were looking for top prospects for these teams. And this coach said, hey, you got to get this guy, Eddie Plank. You got to check him out. So he sent a telegram to Gettysburg. Eventually he got to Eddie Plank. There was a tryout in uh, um, Baltimore while the um, 
uh, Philadelphia Athletics were playing the Baltimore Orioles. He went down. He tried out. He actually joined the team for the last couple innings of a game, which, you know, by all accounts, he didn't pitch very well. He was really nervous. But after the game, he was offered a contract. As luck would have it, when Eddie Plank died in 1926, the Gettysburg College was in the process of building a new gym. And it was announced that the gym would be called the Eddie Plank Gym. And here it is across the campus, uh, just near the ball field where he spent so much time. And uh, it's still the Eddie Plank Gym at Gettysburg College. The most unusual honors that Eddie Plank has in the town is he has his own restaurant named after him. Eddie Plank was signed by the Philadelphia Athletics in May of 1901. On May 15th, he actually played a final game at Carlisle against Dickinson for the Gettysburg College team. That was a Wednesday. On that Friday, he packed up his bags and the town of Gettysburg bid him farewell and he traveled to Washington, D.C. to join Connie Mack and the rest of the Philadelphia Athletics. On Saturday, the next day, he was a starting pitcher against the Washington Senators and he won the game. According to the Philadelphia newspaper that was just beside themselves with joy at their newfound pitching uh, prospect. Eddie Plank, Gettysburg's well-known pitcher, has been signed by manager Mack of the Philadelphia Athletics. He left Friday joining the team in Washington. That elongated Gettysburg boy, Plank by name, was on the rubber for the Quakers. And the way he twirled the ball, batted, and fielded speaks volumes for his future. Now, what's interesting, um, after a few games pitching for the Philadelphia Athletics, uh, there's some interesting reviews of his pitching. Uh, according to one article, the secret of Plank's pitching is no secret at all. He has a good, strong arm, a powerful constitution to back it up, and neither drinks, smokes, chews, nor swears. Nor does he eat canned pickles. That's very important. Added to this, he used to work 10 hours a day at a pretzel factory, and he knows how to twist things. That's not true. There is no mayonnaise dressing on plank, and we'll be plankety planked if he isn't the warmest baby that ever came down the Ridge Road in a go-kart. So I think by that statement, the Philadelphia paper was overjoyed. Um, in 1902, uh, the Philadelphia Athletics were the American League champions. Now, there was no World Series at that time, but they won the pennant. In September 1904, Plank faced Cy Young of the Boston Red Sox. He threw a 13-inning shutout and got the game-winning hit in the 13th inning for a 1-0 win. He played in the 1905 World Series, and they lost. In 1910, they played the World Series against the clubs. Um, the, the Cubs. In 1911, they won the World Series over the New York Giants. In 1913, they again won the World Series over the New York Giants. And although they didn't have a most valuable player of the World Series at that time, undoubtedly it was Eddie Plank who was their best player. To celebrate the 1913 World Series, the town of Gettysburg had a banquet at the Eagle Hotel in town for Eddie. We have his picture at the banquet. And while he was here, he took Connie Mack and some of his friends on a battlefield tour, and they stopped right here and had their photograph taken in front of these rocks. And what's really ironic is in the picture, they are in a 1914 Oakland, which I get a big kick out of. Uh, in 1914, they were in the World Series again, but they lost to the Boston Braves. Uh, in 1915, uh, Eddie Plank went with the newly created 
Federal League, and he pitched with the St. Louis Terriers. Um, in 1916, 1917, he pitched for the St. Louis Browns, and in 1917, in his final game, he lost a one-to-nothing game to Walter Johnson, another of the greatest pitchers of all time. There was some talk about him being traded to the New York Yankees, but he retired. Eddie Plank retired in 1917 and returned to his hometown. Uh, for a time, he and his brother Ira, who was also a baseball player of some note, was in the minor leagues for a while, opened up an automobile uh, garage on uh, York Street. Um, ironically, in 1923, uh, Eddie played in an exhibition game at Gettysburg College with college old-timers against the then varsity team. Eddie pitched a one-hitter against the poor college kids and his team won eight to one. He had a stroke on February 22nd, 1926, and a couple days later, on February 24th, 1926, he died. He's buried here in Evergreen Cemetery. Now let's look at a few of his stats. Of course, we mentioned he's born in 1875, so he did not even pitch in the major leagues until he's almost 26 years old. He died at the age of 50. He was five feet, 11 and a half. Coincidentally, I am five feet, 11 and a half. He weighed 175 pounds and he was a left-hander. And so he was one of the most successful left-handed pitchers of all time. Um, he today, uh, sits with 326 wins, and that is third most among left-handers all time, be behind Warren Spahn and Steve Carlton. Now, I should mention here that uh, some people do not want to count the year that he was with the Federal League, which is 21 victories. So that pulls him down to 305 victories. He'd be tied for third uh, then. Um, uh, uh, with Tom Glavin, I should mention. He had 69 shutouts in his career, which is number one among left-handed pitchers and fifth overall amongst all pitchers. He was in uh, 581 games and he had 410 complete games and he had 2,112 shut uh, strikeouts. So he's up there uh, amongst uh, strikeout leaders too. And of course his ERA, and again, that's kind of difficult to figure out in that time, but his ERA is about uh, 2.35. And one thing uh, we want to mention, uh, Eddie Plank is from Adams County, and there's a lot of people that have grandparents that knew Eddie Plank. And I talk to people all the time that have some story about Eddie Plank. But here's what I want the people of Adams County to do. I want you to take a look in your attics, and I want an Eddie Plank baseball card for the Adams County Historical Society Museum. The Eddie Plank 1909 baseball card in excellent condition has sold for $250,000. It is the like the second most valuable baseball card of its era, only surpassed by like uh, Honus Wagner or something like that, you know, that Pittsburgh Pirate guy. But uh, uh, Eddie Plank baseball card, find me one. Oh, and one last thing, anytime you come to his grave, if you look on one of the planters, you can usually find a baseball that someone who has visited him has placed upon his grave. This particular one, it's kind of hard to read, it's uh, faded out because it's been in the rain here a little bit, but it looks like it's signed by the members of the Little League Baseball team. I enjoyed our video on Gettysburg's hometown hero, Eddie Plank. 
If you're interested in learning more about Eddie Plank, of course, we have a research archives here at the Adams County Historical Society, but also we have some artifacts associated with Eddie Plank in our Gettysburg Beyond the Battle Museum, including a 1911 team photograph after they beat the New York Giants in the World Series. We have a bat that was owned by Eddie Plank, and we actually have a um, program on display from the celebration after the 1913 World Series. Now to end our Eddie Plank video, I wanted to mention that we have lots of newspaper articles about him, and one of them contains a quote from Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb, the Georgia Peach, said, the greatest pitcher I ever saw was Eddie Plank. He had everything, but most of all, he had brains. Uh, if you enjoy the videos and the content we put up on our YouTube channel, please hit the like and subscribe.